And so that was my second hypothesis. And then my third hypothesis, they said, you may have good leadership skills. You may understand the power and the political dynamics mm. within government or within the public sector space. Mm. But the culture mm. can, uh, can either work for you or against you. Mm. And so the higher you go, because at that point I was assistant director, I was very senior in government. Mm. Uh, if you need to drive your agenda and to drive change within government, you have to understand the culture. And so that's how my concept note for my PhD started. And then I said, I want to go and study different public sector organizations mm. so that I, am, I, I can say, is it just CBK that's unique? Or is this no, is this, are these challenges mm. inherent within the Kenyan public sector space? Mm. And so that's how my PhD process has been. Right. And, um, and then, I, I did, of course, I, I did my PhD at Strathmore University for, with a focus on public sector leadership. And it's been, it was a very interesting uh, process, working, walking into different parastatals, mm. speaking to their employees, you know, with, through a survey, getting their perspectives. Mm. And then speaking to different CEOs and the contextual challenges within the public sector that then informs, for me, I say, if you want to be successful in the public sector, mm -hmm. and that's to come to the question you asked, mm -hmm. you have to have, you have to be able to have a certain understanding of leadership. And leadership, I know ELF does a lot of work around right. leadership. Yes. And there are so many variables within leadership that yes. you need to have a good understanding of yes. but you also need to understand issues of power mm -hmm. and you know for me my study there was the election mm -hmm. while i'm doing my my research mm -hmm. and i'm collecting my data mm -hmm. and power changed within the kenyan context mm -hmm. and it was so hard i thought i wouldn't finish my phd mm -hmm. because getting data getting approvals getting into those organizations were extremely difficult mm -hmm. but of course the the culture within public sector organizations are also unique. Mm -hmm. And so as you drive interventions, as you partner with public sector organizations, and any youth who wants to go into public sector, they must build these competencies. Mm -hmm. They must know that the public sector environment has very many stakeholders. Right. And the problems are very many. Right. You know, there's climate change, yes. there's governance, mm -hmm. there's issues of political um, accountability. There's, there's all these Gen Z who want accountability from the public sector, something that's new. Yes. Public sector has always been a dark space where people are not accountable. Mm -hmm. um, there's aspects of, of youth involvement. Mm -hmm. How do we bring in the youth? The, the more, the, you know, we have a lot of people who are graduating from university. So yeah. as you go into leadership within the public sector space, how do you help to deal with these complex problems? Right. And how do you drive your agenda to be, for the government in place? Because the government in place must support you. They're the enablers. Mm -hmm. They are the funders. Government, yes. government drives policy. Mm -hmm. Government has the most funding, mm -hmm. you know. And so how do you ensure that you get your agenda and all the things that you want mm -hmm. um, supported? So, mm -hmm. so that's in essence my passion about public sector leadership, mm -hmm. my career. Mm -hmm. And so I left CBK because at that point um, the the government had said at certain levels you can only do you can only do your contract your contract can be renewed only once right so we were put on three year contracts mm -hmm. renewable ones so my my contract lapsed just before covid at the end of of covid but one of the things as i said for me i always so i ticked the box of having worked in government mm -hmm. and struggled mm -hmm. um i ticked that box and i said you know my dream as a young person, because the government paid my school fees at Kenya High, mm -hmm. was to work for government and contribute. I have been able to work mm -hmm. in government for six years. Did I contribute? I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. uh, was I successful? I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. But what I could say is that I learned lessons that I felt could be, could be useful right. for for building capacity within the, the young people. So for, for me, my passion is to teach, mm -hmm. and I do a bit of teaching mm. uh, within within different spaces. But that, uh, that experience at the Central Bank, a combination of all the papers that I have, mm -hmm. a combination of my, my experience within the UN, within yeah. government, within um, the consulting and within the corporate, made it much easier for me to, to, to get into the Africa Development Bank. And so, so I applied mm. again, I just mm. applied, mm. just applied. Mm. And I went through an interview, a very long interview <laughs> process, uh -huh. but, uh, but I got it. And, and for me, I like, I like the space I am in now. 
um, I like the space I am in now because then now I'm able to contribute in a little way mm -hmm. to Africa. Right. You get. So I'm not really limited to, to the Kenyan context. Mm -hmm. I'm actually able to contribute to Africa. Mm -hmm. and, and the lessons that I learned, that I took away from CBK, mm -hmm. because for me sometimes I said I was scared. Mm -hmm. I was scared because mm -hmm. I was naive, I was young, mm -hmm. I didn't understand a lot of issues are the ones that are working for me now mm. in my role you know when i get challenges i'm able to to say sometimes i smile i say i would have handled it differently if i hadn't right. been at cbk you right. you understand yeah and so and so so that's how you get to to the regional <laughs> <laughs> to your role <laughs> to now because you, you ask how do you get to <laughs> be chief there, yes. so to be chief to be chief <laughs> you have to be you have to have experience yes <laughs> you have to have good papers uh yeah. solid papers yeah but you also need to be an, it, it's easy if you're an african because yeah. then you under, understand african problems right. and you can really contribute to you know to coming up with african solutions for african problems that right. can work for Africa right. because for a lot of times and if you look at public sector reforms that have failed most public sector reforms failed mm -hmm. um, and you can read the World Bank reports you can mm -hmm. read the OPEC reports mm -hmm. they failed because we were coping and tasting mm -hmm. you understand yes so these reforms have been successful in New Zealand these reforms right. have been successful in Canada mm -hmm. we want to tell Kenyans to use the new public management you know model right. but our context is very different right. our needs are very different our right. challenges are very different right. and so for me having done my PhD mm -hmm. I'm not doctor yet, <laughs> but I will be before the end of Soon. the year uh -huh. um, is to say how do we then get even if you're adopting models mm -hmm. that are not African developed, mm -hmm. we need to contextualize. Right. You understand? Yes. Because our problems, our challenges in mm -hmm. Africa are very unique. Mm -hmm. They're very unique to us. Right. They're very contextual. Right. And we need people who speak our language, right. who understand our problems, mm -hmm. and who can resolve our problems. That's incredible. I mean, I'm just picking out thinking of so many gems just in your explanation right now um i wonder if you can uh, explore a bit about you mentioned a desire to want to serve while you're still very much in the private space and one way or another even within the private space working on public sector aspects um but then with a with a calling and with a desire to contribute more to have more impact uh, in, a, in, a, in Kenya, when we have challenges related to perception of public service, inefficiencies, nepotism, tribalism, corruption, and whatnot, what does it take to make a decision to shift and move? Sometimes it comes with also a lot of discomfort, even before we delve into, you know, what it takes to then, you know, build up the muscle to deal with the, the real public sector challenges that a lot of our public servants have to deal with. What does it take to um, that the, to make that intentional decision to shift and work in public service? Wow, Jerry, that's a very good question. That's a very, very, very good question. And I don't know how to approach it, but I think I will I will attempt to use my experience. And for me, I don't I don't believe my experience is extremely unique. Mm -hmm. I just think I, I was also very targeted and focused mm -hmm. and I've been able to mm -hmm. achieve some of the goals I set out for myself. Mm -hmm. So I think your background informs who you are, mm -hmm. your socialization. We are right. human beings are social beings. Mm -hmm. And and for me, my background really informed who I wanted to be. So growing up in the village in Bungoma, in Bungoma County, mm -hmm. and I didn't have exposure to a lot of things that people who grew up in the, in, in the cities or in the urban centers mm -hmm. uh, had. But what I did have was the commitment from my teachers mm -hmm. in Lugulu Primary mm -hmm. to make us better. Because our, our headmistress, she was called Mrs. Um, Oh my God, it's such a long time ago. What was her name? <laughs> Mrs. Watema. Mm -hmm. In Lugulu Primary used to say, all of you are capable. You can be anything. Mm. So it's also who, 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 which voices are you hearing? Right. And so in Lugulu Primary, because Lugulu Primary was a very competitive school, mm -hmm. we used to bring out the top people in, in Kenya, even then. Mm -hmm. We were beaten. We were beaten a lot. I mean, mm -hmm. we were really beaten. But there was the message that you could be what you can be. Mm -hmm. And so at that point in time, I 
my mother was a teacher at the high school, the Gulu High School, so I was a, a little more privileged mm -hmm. than my other classmates. Mm -hmm. You understand? Right. And it, this is, uh, and I keep talking about context. Mm. I was, I was a child of a high school teacher, mm. yet I, we were in the village, so mm. I was privileged when I was in the Gulu Primary School. But I needed, for me, one of the things I knew I wanted because I would visit my cousin in Nairobi during holidays. I would come to my auntie's house, mm. and my cousin I thought lived so well. Mm. There were in Madaraka estates, mm -hmm. there were buses, mm -hmm. there were matatus, we eat chips, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And so I knew I wanted to get myself out of Lugulu. And I remember when I was sitting for my KCPE exams, I said, I must be the best, I must be the best. Mm -hmm. And I did very well. Mm -hmm. And when I, so when I came to Kenya High from Lugulu, it was culture shock and I met children of ministers, mm -hmm. you know, and they had all their hair done and right. everything. And, mm -hmm. and so I think I was, two things that were very clear for me because I was on bursary. Yeah. I was on bursary. Um, I knew that I am here because of bursary. Mm -hmm. Not because my mother could afford it. My mother could not afford it. Mm -hmm. But I also knew that I need to make sure that there's value mm -hmm. to the government. At that point in time, for me, I used to say, if the government is paying for me, I need to create value. Mm -hmm. And so I need to work hard. Right. And so for me, that, that, mm -hmm. that, that, that was the thought, mm -hmm. making sure that the investment that the government was making in Lois yeah. at Kenya High yeah. has a return. Mm -hmm. And as my career took, took you know, as, so I went to the University of Nairobi, of course, after that and everything, I always knew I must give back mm -hmm. to the government. Right. And so my, my purpose, or the, the force that pushed me to go to, to work in government mm -hmm. was really my background. Wow. But of course context has changed. A lot of yeah. people now just want to work in government. And, and we talk about values, and that's why I sit even mm -hmm. on the board of ELF. Mm -hmm. Because they, there's a lack of integrity in right. our context now. Yes. There's, a, there's a lot of people want to join government so they can steal. Right. So they can do tenders, mm -hmm. so they can, they can get rich quickly mm -hmm. because that's their their loopholes mm -hmm. within 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 processes within government that then enable mm -hmm. or allow for pilferage you know mm -hmm. still theft and all that and you're yes. kenyans you yes. know what happens yeah. and that's why we say how do we contribute even as elf yes. as an organization yes. to making sure that we are building leaders of integrity right. that we're building leaders that will do the right thing right. you know mm -hmm. when no one is watching right. and that's the gap that we have in africa